All right, back to working on our, setting up our gift transformation assignment. This is going right to assignments from the homepage, going right to where you post. This example here is actually more complicated than it looks. When you're thinking about transforming elements, you know, changing the, ch the change of state from beginning, middle to end, the transformation here is in the environment from day to night, right? The other things like the expression that's changing on the sun, the clock face turning on the watch, even the, the sunbeams turning around the sun and the chain being pulled, all of those are just movement tests. The thing that actually is a transformation is that it starts one way with the blue sky and then ends a different way with the black sky, right? And then it just moves back and forth in between. But here we have a lot of things that are being animated. We have the up and down of the hand. We have the turning of the, the hands of the clock. We have the expression on the face of the sun. We have the kind of spiraling of the rays, which I think makes the animation. So when the sun's awake, it's more than just the eyes are open. It's actually kind of actively engaged. And then the transformation is this simple color change, which gradates pretty subtly between the blue and the black. The clouds don't move, nothing else moves. And if you realize if there are other things going on, like the sun moving across the sky as it does, the clouds moving across the sun as they do, that would all just muddy the communication of it, right? So that's why you need a storyboard to start with. A storyboard, just really basic sketch, helps you understand the intentions of what you're trying to set up. So this is how I'm going to set it up. And I would recommend something similar for you. We talked in the last video when we just kind of introduced these things. You want to know what you want to transform. And it has to include at least some pixels you've already created for the class. But you can also add other things. So because this is the, the Photoshop version, Photoshop's a more powerful tool than some of our freeware options I'll be doing in the afternoon class. I'm going to be doing kind of the more ambitious thing. Where in a square composition, I'm going to be composing my creature in its landscape. And then just like that sun turning on and off, I have to decide what is the thing that's going to change. Do I want to change and transform the character? And I'll show you an example of what that might look like. So a change of state. And transforming the character might look something like these are some past instructor examples like this, where the character starts out one way and then ends up another way. In this case, kind of explodes. It's like this volcano rock creature. Right. So the exploding of that creature is the transformation of state. In this one, it's the environment that changes, not the creature. So it starts with a pan across the setting. Kind of see that the creature appears. And the creature is just moving, but it's not changing. It's the environment. This storm rolls in. And that's the transformation. And then I just do, do a quick little character exit. Right. Yep. So here you have a setting and a character. But in this example, the character changes. And it uses a panning shot to, uh, to reset. So you have the atmosphere. You have kind of clouds and dust. And then you have this rock tumble in. And then that transforms into the character. Kind of with a rock shell. Who rocks, walks across the landscape. But notice like the, the planet in the sky isn't moving there's mist and stuff moving, but the clouds in general are staying put. You want to focus what your transformation is. Otherwise, there can just be a whole lot of factors. Now here we have an animated background with this water flowing. Then we have this creature come in, and then it's a creature transformation. It starts to glow and become kind of one with the environment. On and on and on, these different things. I liked that, so I wanted to show a change of state, you know. 
with the T-Rex again. And for this, I'm just using T-Rex toys and then animating them. But this I would consider a transformation. Not of the T-Rex, not of the environment, because the environment's raining the whole time, and there's some lightning flashes and things, but of this creature, character X, because it gets chewed up, right? And going from non-chewed up to chewed up is a transformation. Just like being set on fire is a transformation. So these are the kinds of things you can keep in mind. In this one, it gets kind of sucked in, which is something similar to maybe what I'll do this semester. And then here, the character doesn't transform, it just moves, but the setting transforms, it melts. And I kind of zoom in, and the character kind of slips out of frame. So you can see we've gone through a lot of these where I use the creature and the landscape. And if that seems too ambitious, don't worry about it. You can just use one or the other or use your emoji or something else. Right? So lots, lots of examples to play with. Now this actually is one of the more ambitious ones where you have a change in the environment. You know, it, it gets dark, there's a storm, lightning hits a character and then a secondary character comes in and says, I think the class's idea snorts the ashes of the first character. <laughs> So a lot going on. What's the transformation? There's a transformation in the setting where you get the storm. And then there's a transformation, obviously, in this little sprite character uh, getting dissolved, which is an 8-bit version of me. Right. So have fun with it. They're made to be goofy. They're all, I'm showing you so many options because they're all going to be fairly short. And then everything can be told in just nine frames. So you have examples of setting all of those up. And what they all have in common is you want to have a, a sense of a beginning, a middle, and an end. So if I'm going to use this landscape and this character, the other thing I want to do is compose it within a square. So in my first frame, this is what's called an introduction frame, I need to introduce the thing I'm telling the story through. And the thing I'm going to transform for this is going to be my setting. So I want to introduce my setting. And I might make a little note of that. Get a smaller brush here. And I'm at really low resolution because this does not need to be very clean. So to introduce my setting, how do I do that? I choose kind of the what's called the hero shot. I'm going to show that licorice nice and strong in the corner. The mountains behind. Am I going to worry about the sun? Probably not. Probably not going to move the sun too much. Okay. Then I can show my creature coming into the frame. So now this setting is just kind of assumed, right? It's not transforming yet. Now I'm going to introduce my character. Now character is always in an animation. Character is what you experience the story through. So if I never have a creature and I just have a setting, but I show a transformation in the setting by that licorice, like wilting or changing color or changing shadows or having lighting on it that changes through the day, then the licorice tree would be my character, right? So it's just whatever the audience experiences it through. I'm going to introduce a character, which is going to be my, my slug guy here. And he's going to come on the scene probably pretty quickly. That might take several frames to kind of move him onto the scene to basically look like this creature scape. But here is my character put a little crown on him. This is the introduction, right? And all of this is just setting up. This is the beginning. And then I'm going to have my character turn. And if you want to, you can use little arrows in storyboards that can be really helpful because these are all things you're going to have to animate. And it's going to have its mouth wide open as it does. It's going to basically just flip horizontally and it's going to start reaching for 
this licorice. So we're going to have interaction. Okay, now this is what's called an action. So I abbreviate with abbreviate it with act, not to be confused with scene and act, right? Because this is all happening in one scene. So it turns to eat licorice or eat the tree. Now, in the middle, this is where transformation needs to start happening. Because you're, and I'm trying to do a little bit of kind of storytelling art here. I'm trying to set up an expectation here. It's kind of like a punchline. You set something up, you think it will just gnaw at the tree. But instead, the creature is not going to move at all. Instead, the tree is going to start getting sucked in. Like the tree is going to start moving. And this character now, kind of centrally placed with its big mouth, is just going to kind of hoover this stuff in. And so sometimes that's not clear in your sketch. So what you, you put is the action. You can just describe it tree gets sucked and this is going to go across the whole middle the raspberries are going to get sucked everything's going to get sucked into this mouth of this character and sometimes i'll just thicken the the outline of the character in my sketches because now the tree's gone right now the licorice black licorice base is going to go into the mouth as well and then eventually By my third keyframe here in the middle, even the mountains are starting to get sucked away until we're left with just a background plate of sky. So I'm going to just say, all sucked. So where do I go from there? Is that a transformation? It isn't of the creature, but it is of the environment, right? Now the end is how do you conclude it? And if you're thoughtful about it, how do you set it up to reset to the beginning? This is called setting to reset. So I do a little spiral and return. So we have our creature alone here. I'm going to pause a beat where it's just the creature in nothingness. Maybe the creature moves around a little bit. See, I'll see how much time I have, right? Then it's going to start vomiting this stuff up just in reverse order. And this is what's called a reaction shot. This will just be kind of a still moment of the creature in that environment. So you see the consequences of everything being sucked up. Now it's going to vomit everything up and it's going to put everything back to normal. And then the creature is still there. So how do I set it to reset? Well, that creature is then going to have to exit. So the action will be character or creature exits. Now that's fairly ambitious because there's a few things going on there. But if, if we're clear about what we're going for and we're clear about the assets we have to work with, remember we have all the different layers. Um, this is at a lower resolution than print resolution. We're going to do this at 8 by 8 inches at slightly higher than, than standard minimum screen resolution. So we're going to do it at 100 pixels per inch PPI. No, that's for our finished animation. My sketch here is actually very, very small. It is 2 inches by 2.5 inches at 300 pixels per inch. You know, it doesn't really matter because this is just meant to post to Canvas. But if I zoom in, I can see the pixels pretty quickly. But that's my sketch. So I'm going to save that. Let's just save it as a JPEG. And that's what I can post.
but I, I want to give it a name. 